Hey guys, Star Survivors here. Today I have another reaction video for you guys today. Today I'll be reacting to Connor vs. Lucy Death Battle. Now, here's like a new series I'm going to start reacting to, but if it's up to you guys. You guys want Comment down below if you guys want me to react to more Death Battle videos, because I've seen pretty much every single one. And Lucy, I don't know, I think she's like an anime character or something. I don't watch anime. And Carnage, I do know a lot about Carnage because I am a huge Marvel fan. So I'm putting my money on Carnage for now. But once I like know about Lucy, I think I might change my mind. Depends if she's good or not. But anyway, the original link of the video will be in the description below. Make sure to like, share, comment, and subscribe to my channel if you guys are new. Let's begin. Hey everybody, we have a brand new Death Battle t-shirt uh, on the ScrewAttack slash Rooster Teeth store. Head to store.roosterteeth.com and you guys can pick one up. It's a great way to support the show. Death Battle. If my ex-wives have taught me anything, it's that there's no real limit to crazy. Like <laughs> Carnage, Marvel's dangerously insane psychopath. Or Lucy, the messed up murder lady from Elfin Lied. Elfin Lied? What? It's German. Yeah, whatever. He's Wiz and I'm Boomstick. And it's our job to analyze their weapons, armor, and skills to find out who would win <coughs> a death battle. Excuse me. Cletus Cassidy didn't have the chance to be a well-adjusted adult because yeah. his entire family was already crazy. While Cletus was just a boy, his father got sent to jail for killing his mother. Which he because his mom because tried to kill him. Tried to kill Cletus, which she did because Cletus had tortured and killed her dog Fifi. Well, go and also Cassidy. because he killed his grandma. All murderers deserve death, even if they're eight. Right, Jack Spaniels? <laughs> Good boy. Oh, and uh, Cletus murdered his grandma too. Yep. He's kind of a bitch. He didn't stop there and wound up burning down his own orphanage. Years later, he was finally arrested and convicted for 11 murders. You mean the 11 murders they knew about? But while in prison, Cletus found that he wasn't alone. In fact, his cellmate just so happened to be... Eddie Brock. Who you may know is that creepy guy covered in black ink called Venom. That ink is actually a symbiotic alien known as a Clintar. This symbiote bonded with Eddie, transforming him into a powerful and violent rival for the friendly neighborhood Spider-Man. Yep. But what Eddie didn't know was... A tiny was piece of him. <laughs> Time to go a tiny piece Eddie. of the symbiote well, came onto Cletus and turned him into Carnage. Sexually. When Eddie became Venom once again, the symbiote sort of oozed out its spawn and left it there. Just like me and my dad. Well, this new symbiote immediately attached itself to Cletus, but unlike the Venom one, it merged through a cut on his skin, creating this suit made out of blood. You, that doesn't seem sanitary. He has a pretty good design, and though. Together, I got it. became Carnage. A fitting name for a psycho mass murderer. Cletus and his new symbiote quickly got up to what they knew best, creating Maximum Carnage. Remember that game? Great. <laughs> And with his new superpowers, he was a vicious force to be reckoned with. He has the same superhuman strength, speed, and durability as Venom, and supposedly even greater, like a Venom 2.0. He can shapeshift yep. to make all sorts of killer weapons, like axes, swords, and spikes. He can even rip those weapons off himself or launch them at his victims. Have you ever tried ripping your fingers off and throwing them at people? No. That's just kind of what Carnage does. The symbiote can also reach out with dozens of chaotic blood-soaked tendrils, perfect for strangling the people he doesn't want to see anymore. With a single touch, Carnage can infect a person with a portion of his symbiote, controlling or torturing oh, them at his leisure. He has unbelievable regeneration, and even if somebody finds a way to disable his suit, the Carnage symbiote lives inside his bloodstream and can come back True. out through something as meager as a paper cut. Also, the symbiote literally sees everything around it. It's kind of like wearing a suit made of eyeballs. But let's say you're able to what dodge the that? projectiles, outrun the tendrils, and get out of sight from the eyeball suit. You're still not safe. He will catch you because he can sprout wings and fly. What the hell? Since when? <laughs> Since realizing that shapeshifting is a really, really useful ability. Yeah. Oh, so he's able to fly, he's totally aware of everything around him, and he's full of blood? This guy's like a giant mosquito of death. Uh, sure. Carnage has said he's at least ten times faster than the average man. But that's pretty eh. modest, because Venom has shown he can move fast enough to catch up to a bullet 
after it's fired. And Carnage is frequently shown to be as fast or even faster than him. This puts Carnage over 1,500 miles per hour, over twice the speed of sound. Jesus. He's lifted a 50-ton tank, and he can overpower Spider-Man, whose best supported strength feat was lifting that giant machine thing that weighed as much as a 1965 locomotive. Which would put it around 130 tons. <laughs> Why is Did Boomstick you know those weird things crawling around here? Body? When he wanted to find a I mean, I get he's like a weapon specialist, but he why is he the here? The Empire State Building and just stretched them all out over the city. He found her by this coastline, and this building nearby looks a lot like the consolidated Edison plant between 14th and 15th Street. That's about oh. two miles away. And as a thank you for saving her, she shot Carnage in the head. Well, fine. Save your own ass next time, lady. <laughs> hey, he was fine. Carnage's durability doesn't come from a sturdy build. Instead, his form is malleable and somewhat fluid. Oh, that was creepy. His body still exists somewhere in that massive blood, flesh, and writhing tentacles. But even when he's hit by a train, struck by missiles, or blasted apart by a tritium bomb, he can always just pull himself back together. So long as there's a piece of You can just nuke around. the world and Carnage will still be alive. Blast, it looks like Carnage survived a blast worth 125 tons of TNT. Very impressive. Also, he once smothered and survived a gene bomb designed to wipe out all of humanity except mutants. He's even survived being ripped in half and thrown into space. Seriously, what kills this guy? Well, Nothing. He does share the same weaknesses as other symbiotes, namely extremely loud noises and heat. Well, until he traded the sound one for a weakness against some Cthulhu-looking magic. Carnage has been through a lot, but with two minds as one, he always gets back up to keep doing what he loves. Murder, murder, and, you know, more murder. <laughs> Carnage is chaos! And voice. All right. There are some mysteries the world holds which no one is meant to know. Every day, something, somewhere, comes ever closer to destroying everything you hold dear. One such secret is the Diclona. Uh, no big what? deal. They're just a race of crazy people who want to infect human beings to make more Diclona and then wipe out all of humanity. Oh, Jesus. Look at little horns. They look like kitty ears. To accomplish this, the Diclona would have to rely on their queen. God, better known as Lucy. Luckily for everyone, some important people figured this out and captured her. And now it's time for your only warning. Right, Lucy's methods, let's just say they're not for the faint of heart. And let's also say that those lucky important people oh. were about to get very, very unlucky. Oh, God. <laughs> If she's gonna do that to Carney, she can probably just regenerate, so, so far, my money's still in Carnage. As an infant, Lucy was abandoned by her parents and left alone to suffer a life of constant discrimination. It was the horns, wasn't it? Right, even the average kid hates growing up in an orphanage, but it was especially painful for her. Until she found a stray puppy and decided to take care of it. That adorable little critter and her became best friends. And then the other kids from the orphanage went out and beat it to death. And what? forced her to watch. Oh my god! Oh no shit, she wants to kill everyone! Go ahead, Lucy! Tear up those little bastards! Yeah! <laughs> Whoa! Damn! This yeah. is the first time Lucy unleashed her psychokinetic vectors. As a Diclonius queen, Lucy is meant to use these vectors to infect ordinary human beings with the Diclonius virus. Oh, I get it that to kill the puppy, but so Jesus Christ. For simplicity's sake, think of the vectors as invisible arms which can sprout from Lucy's back. Lucy can use up to 28 vectors with a normal range of about 6 to 7 feet. When she gets really serious, her horns grow and the vectors get way longer and stronger. She can Ooh, vibrate damn. her vectors at different frequencies, and each level of vibration language, has different sorry. effects. Kind of like that thing that my ex-wife had on the nightstand that I thought was one of those crazy pens. At low frequencies, her vectors can pass through objects with no effect. At a medium frequency, the vectors become solid, like extendable hands, while still completely invisible. These can be used as shields and lift heavy objects. Oh man! So if people just use so she kind of uses it like the force, the like tying their shoes from across the room. Also, since this seems to be a thing in this episode, she can fly. It's not really flying. She's just lifting herself off the ground. 
With the third frequency, Lucy turns her vectors into invisible blades. These Jesus. can cut through people and bend metal. And with the last and highest frequency, Lucy gets explosive. No, really. At this level, they finally become visible and can strike with enough force to detonate. Damn. They don't call this chick the queen for nothing. Yeah. Unfortunately, Lucy is not always in control of what she does. Turns out she has developed several alternate personalities. Yeah, getting shot in the head can do that to you. That injury specifically created Mew, a passive, almost childlike persona which exists as a coping mechanism for Lucy's trauma. As Mew, Lucy would finally oh. find friends and began forging a path toward hopeless redemption. Unlike her third personality, the so-called DNA voice, which constantly whispers in her ear that she's got a job to do. Give them all, Lucy, before they hurt our puppy. Boomstick to stop. Lucy's fast enough to block bullets from a point-blank range. And once, she actually saved herself from a bullet after she had already been shot. As in, while the bullet was traveling between her skin and her heart. It looks like she's getting shot what? by an MP5, which fires bullets at nearly 900 miles per hour. With her body type, the distance gun. between Lucy's skin and heart is less than an inch, probably around 2.4 centimeters. Given the bullet speed and the distance her vector would have to reach from her back before the bullet hit her heart, her vector had to move nearly 1,900 miles per hour. That's over twice the speed of sound. Yeah. Throw a pen through a guy's skull. Brutal. And even toss this Was you Magneto? Over. When compared to this guy, Bando, whom we know is six feet tall, we can determine the boulder weighs about 75 tons. Her vectors are also tough enough to block a missile from the Air Force. While the exact model of missile is unspecified, it is fairly large and likely an air-to-surface type. I bet it's one of the Air Force's slams, or standoff land attack missile, built off the back of the Navy's harpoon missile. In fact, a harpoon is used against a different Diclonius at one point. So this beast slammed into her vector at 500 miles per hour with a 1,000 pound explosive yield, and it didn't even phase her. Okay, even this Lucy chick is actually starting to surprise me. Explosion herself. Like, knowing her beliefs and her backstory and stuff, but... The time she punched through an iron, my mommy's still gonna be on carnage. compared to nuclear fusion. This kicked up a 100-foot tidal wave and a 9.2 magnitude earthquake. A level so high, there's only been four comparable quakes ever recorded. Her vectors can be as wide as buildings and reach into outer space. Except that's about when Lucy reaches her limit. Right. Hmm. As a Diclonius, Lucy has a few severe weaknesses. Her vectors can be nullified if she's struck in the forehead or if one of her horns are broken. Also, oh. if Lucy pushes herself too hard, she starts to melt. Gotta like ice cream out in the Texas sun. It's not pretty. She's just a big puddle of goop with a face. But she's still a total badass, even at her meltiest. While suffering agonizing pain, she was capable of single-handedly halting a massive military threat. While Jesus. healing and protecting the person she loved most. Perhaps redemption wasn't so hopeless after all. Hey, let's watch her kill some more people. Cause yeah, that's satisfying. The combatants are set. Let's end this debate once and for all. Carnage but all the first, way. You'd be crazy not to get in on this deal. Blue Apron. By now, you've probably heard of Blue Apron, the leading meal kit delivery service. Yeah, we probably heard of it already you because you put it in pretty much every single in make, every single like of your videos. Glazed chicken with poblano and lime rice. There's plenty Ooh, to choose from, since they offer 12 new recipes each week. All you have to do is choose the two, three, or four that sound best to you, and they deliver it right to your door. Plus, it's super simple to cook. It's got easy-to-follow instructions and perfectly proportioned ingredients. They're non-GMO, and the meat has no added hormones. Hmm. My favorite part is feeling like a master chef, making creative and delicious meals with my own hands. You guys really need to try it out. It's pretty nice coming home knowing I'll have a delicious meal I can whip up with these. Actually, kind of looks good. Now check out this week's menu and get your first three meals free at blueapron.com. How many do we have on this? Six more minutes. Com slash battle to get your first three meals free. But right now, it's time for a death battle. Let's see this. Oh, it's basically it. Nice.
Oh god, she sees it. She like, did I do that? Carnage. Fight! Ooh. What a cheap way. <laughs> oh yeah, I forgot. In the comments, he actually does use his face as a, like a giant shield. Come on. Ooh. Oh, here we go, Carnage. No pain, no gain. Oh! How many did it say that she had like six of those invisible arm things? No. Oh, okay. Does it hurt yet? No. I'll put you out of your misery. Oh. Please tell me that's not the end. No. Carnage was a challenging opponent. It was incredibly difficult for Lucy to deal and I legit to thought Carnage was gonna win. Had the durability advantage in the bag. Though Lucy fighting as a puddle proved she could take a lot of pain and keep on fighting. Sadly, Carnage came up short in pretty much everything else. Right, Carnage was tough, but not invincible. Even his surviving that gene bomb isn't quite as impressive as it sounds. Since he had no other feats to even remotely back up planetary level durability, and the bomb was more akin to a biological weapon anyway. While Carnage's tendrils could pass speeds of Mach 2, Lucy's vectors once reached into outer space. By timing her accompanying monologue and comparing the longest vector's length to the curvature of the Earth, it's clear she reached over 2,400 miles in 20 seconds max. Jeez. Way longer than Carnage's two mile feet. All this means her vectors were moving at least 440,000 miles per hour. Okay, that's starting to make sense, times though. The speed of sound and 250 times faster than Carnage. Good luck getting past that. And this was really the biggest hurdle. With Lucy's ridiculous speed and Carnage's healing powers, it all boiled down to one thing. Who could hit the killing blow first? I mean, Carnage could respawn from scraps, so the only way to beat him for good was to totally vaporize him. And Lucy had the perfect answer to that. Remember that time she hit an island so hard she caused a 9.2 magnitude earthquake and a 100 foot tall tidal wave? Such a feat would require an enormous amount of explosive energy approximately 31,000 tons of TNT, similar to the bomb that hit Hiroshima. It's literally compared to nuclear fusion in the Elfenlied manga. Elfenlied, it's German. The point is, in order to beat Carnage for good, Lucy needed to totally obliterate him, and she could do that. The heat produced within the initial impact of a nuclear explosion can reach temperatures up to 180,000 degrees Fahrenheit more than 18 times hotter than the surface of the sun. And to top it off, heat was Carnage's biggest weakness. Even if True. Lucy's explosive force was just a fraction of this, it would still have been far too much for him. 
She just needed to smack him before he could power through her vectors, which chances were pretty slim for that happening anyway, because there's a bunch of them and they're so damn fast. Hitting Carnage with a big explosion punch was way easier. Cletus and his symbiote may have had the endurance, but Lucy's spaceworthy speed, overwhelming presence, and nuclear strength won the day. She dealt the carnage needed for a total victory and took the lead. There, I said it right, Wiz. Happy? The winner is Lucy. Thanks for watching, and if you enjoyed the fight, you can get a first membership and watch our... Okay. So, I now see why Carnage will lose. I have no words. No words. But anyway, I hope you enjoyed this reaction video. If you guys did, make sure to like, share, comment, and subscribe to my channel if you guys are new. Comment down below and give me some other video quiz that you guys want me to react to. And tell me if you guys want me to react to more death battles in the future. And I'll see you guys next time. Peace and my little viruses. Goodbye.